cage. Lock yourself in. One craved human company down here in the dark, dank cells below the living city. So I was very pleased to spend the night with Bruce Pascoe, discussing his comments about trade, technology and imperialism. In the interest of avoiding court cases involving slander, Bruce the human was not in the cage. Bruce the author was. My dead father Brian has visited me here, but he's a ghost and that's a completely different sort of visitation. So, Bruce the author told me the human to tell you, sweet ears, who's also human, that over the last 600 centuries, local Australians have consistently traded technology and knowledge and built upon the intellectual property of earlier peeps. What they have not done, he insists, is lined up armies of men and chopped off their left hands or poured molten gold down the throat of rival kings to teach them a lesson. His point is that there can be trade, there can be trade in knowledge, without the imperial project. You can have intellectual growth and its attendant comforts without a standing army busily hacking enemies to death to steal their resources. Bruce, in fact, placed a nuanced contradiction to the image of the noble savage in the zone instinctively responding to their environment like a paleo-athlete emulating Neanderthal man. That image contrasts with lazy communal man, an agricultural lounge lizard in evolutionary terms, who relies on specialisation and a library of IP, thanks to a standing army, a treasury full of gold and a granary full of wheat. A seductive image, but not true. Bruce is supported by Lynn Kelly, who also spent the night here chattering about the memory code. It's been quite busy in the cage since you started sharing this content, sweet ears, so thanks for that, but I'm not quite sure if I've ever get back the peace and quiet that I used to detest. It was Lynn who told me that these pre-literate cultures did not bury their dead with wealth. The sacred burial of the keepers of knowledge took place and there's a half hour rave just talking about that. The point for this rave is that knowledge was stored, recorded, bought and sold and we can map that trade in intellectual property by the evolution of the artefacts that <laughs> exhibit the knowledge. The point that Bruce is making and Tyson Yunker Porter and Jimmy Southwell and other characters who've had chat to us here on Eco Radio, the point is that we have a lot to learn about living sustainably and the idea of ownership is one of the concepts that's stopping us from evolving. Now, I was pondering all of this when I heard the dulcet towns of Mr B, Andrew Bartlett here on Eco Radio. They drifted down into the cold, damp pits of hell you thought hell was hot, didn't you? See, fake news is everywhere. So, Mr B was addressing the crowds in King George Square, talking about the rape of the Baluch, followed by their slaughter from helicopter gunships. We sometimes reflect on genocide here in the cage, but shooting children from helicopters takes us all the way back to the worst images of the Vietnam War. No wonder the Iranian government is murdering journalists and shutting down the internet. So, we have the Uyghurs, the Ukrainians, the Baluch, the Kurds, the forgotten people of Chad, West Papuans, Pacific Island nations. There's a long, long list of exploited people who get in the way of progress, inconveniently claiming human rights when there are gold mines to dig, Jojoba plantations to plant, or a Pacific century to build. We've mined the earth to extinction. Let's mine the oceans while we work out how to escape to Mars. Well, perhaps let's not. Let's work out instead if it's possible to get the genie back in the bottle, to stop shooting and looping and raping, to start the process of healing and recognising that we belong to the land. It does not belong to us. It is pointless to try and take the land from other people because no one owns it. It owns us. And how is that possible? How might we undo the, our addiction to comfort? How might we even consider learning sufficiency from ancient cultures when we are addicted to excess? But that's where I think it starts to get interesting. The Bible, the Christian Bible, says that since we feasted 
on the tree of knowledge, we are self-consciously guilty. We know the difference between good and bad, but we keep doing bad anyway. This is the nature of sin. It's part and parcel of the belief that we have the divine rights to the fruits of nature. The human condition is to fight our inner evil and ascend to heaven so that we can avoid the pits of hell. Into the cage. But is that all there is? If that's all there is, my friends, then let's keep dancing. Well, let's break out the booze and have a ball. If that's all there 